Hey everyone, Mr. O here with another episode of Walk Me Through. We're gonna... I'm actually starting this all over again as I mentioned in my last video. I'll have that linked in the description box below. But in any case, I'm starting over and... Well, because to tell you the truth... Yeah, to tell you the truth, going through all those videos yeah all those recordings is a pain in the ass so decided to delete them and just start over so let's begin now this is going to be a lot easier for me because now i can actually hear what's going on because i had these really awesome headphones that my cousin gave to me and i have to go into mic silence Open your eyes. Open your eyes. Wake up, Link. You're probably wondering what that blue liquid is. I'm kind of wondering myself. So... Yes. So here we are, awakening in a strange futuristic-like chamber. It seems to have this purplish-bluish aura about it. And Link is, of course, dripping wet with whatever he was sleeping in. And what is that shining thing over there? Now, here are the controls. Use the left stick to move about the place. Press the start button to see the controls and use the right stick to rotate the camera. That's why I can't talk. That's right, the, uh, we can see the option menu here. Nothing else to it as of yet. Now let's have a move about the place. Get a feel for it. Now, you see this little terminal here? We have to interact with it. Let's press A and see what happens. That is a Sheikah Slate. Take it. It will help guide you after your long slumber. Long slumber is a... Uh bit of an understatement but here we have what we know let's see we now have possession of the Sheikah slate it's a mysterious tablet with a glowing center now apparently link has never seen this before but something about it seems very familiar to him and that's another thing about this new Zelda game you don't get to name your character anymore. He's called Link by default, and there is no way to change his name, because, mainly because there is apparently voice acting. And with that done, we see a strange wall opening right in front of us. Now, 
Now, if we move forward, we actually see a few crates and a couple of chests. Let's open one and see what we have inside. We have the well-worn trousers, which ups our defense to by one point, which is something new in the game. We can actually press start right now and equip them. That way we won't be going out into the world butt naked. Well, in our underwear. <laughs> now let's go into this. Now let's go get this other chest. Let's open it and see what we have inside. We have a well-worn. We have an old shirt. Let's equip that to up our defense to two. Moving on. We have another pedestal here. Let's interact with it and see what happens. Hold the Sheikah slate up to the pedestal. That will show you the way. <laughs> well, what do you know? It actually has NFC technology. Nice. Authenticating? Sheikah slate confirmed. the light. Our light. That must shine upon Hyrule once again. Now go. Right. Now let us go out. Let us get out of this mysterious place and see what the outside world looks like. There appears to be a mysterious old man down there. Now you may notice from the get-go we have nothing to defend ourselves with. Just about anything you could swing can be used as a weapon, like this tree branch here. However, it will break after a while, and unlike previous Zelda games, we now use the Y button to use our weapon. Let me show you how it works. Press Y to press press Y multiple times to do multiple swings. Hold the Y button for a short time. Oh, the spin attack actually depletes our stamina. That's the wheel you see right next to Link. With let me show you again. That's right, folks. We have the stamina wheel from Skyward Sword. And unfortunately, they added a new mechanic. Ooh, Hyrule Shroom. A little homage to Super Mario Brothers. Anyway, what I was about to say was they added this new mechanic where weapons actually break after, after uses. Now, the tree branch is actually a very weak weapon. We can actually pick up insects as well, which is nice. Oh, why do I want the tree branch? You're basically... Yeah, you basically... I can't talk. 
you're basically thrown out into the world with nothing but your wits. And you can climb trees, as you can see. But climbing things also depletes your stamina wheel. If your stamina wheel runs dry, then you'll be you lose your grip and you'll fall. Not very safe. Uh-oh. Link. Link. Head for the point marked on the map in your Sheikah Slate. Now it is prompting me to press the select button, which is the minus button on the Wii U gamepad. That's right, folks. This is the Wii U version of the game. As you can see, we have a map to look at. We can zoom in and out with the right stick. We can pan and scan with the left stick. This area is pretty vast. For most of you who have seen the E3 demo of the game, it's pretty much the same. But if we zoom out all the way, and that's just the tip of the iceberg as you can see by the size of this map. There are various provinces. There's so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh my god, there's wait. Let's see, let's start again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Is it 14 or 15 provinces? Oh well. Anyway, we now have a map which has to be, which is pretty much nothing right now. Oh, here's an old, here's an old man right there sitting next to the campfire. Bit of a homage to the original Zelda for the NES. You would have expected him to say something like, it is dangerous to go alone, take this. <laughs> but this time around, he doesn't give you a weapon. <laughs> Can't say that I'd be, that I wouldn't be pissed off if someone just walked up to me and took an apple from my campfire. <laughs> Who is this mysterious old man, you might ask? Well, you're going to have to find that out much later on. <clears throat> yes, this is the Great Plateau, the very first province you start up in. That temple kind of looks like a church. If you're hearing somebody else talking in the background, that's my niece. <sighs> anyway, moving on. We have an axe that we can pick up with this axe. Oh, one thing before I continue. You can actually change weapons by holding right on the D-pad and using left and right on the right analog stick to select it. Let go to make your selection. Right. That's right, we can chop down trees with the axe, of course. Duh. If we hit the log again, we can turn it into firewood. Anyway, moving on. 
let's see, we have a torch here. That can be used as a weapon, but it's not very strong at all. Huh? Hmm. That's right. You can lock on to enemies and other targets by using the L LZ button. Oops. Switch to my All right. Let's light this campfire here and see what we can do. Right. With this campfire, we can actually heat food up. Pressing the X button sorts your items out, like so. <laughs> Alright, let's see about cooking some of these apples. Oops. Well, I guess I didn't cook them all. <laughs> I thought they were going to shrivel up and burn. Anyway. Over here, let's dive. And we have our first Kurok. These little guys are woodland spirits. Well, that's one Kurok seed down. Eight more. Yeah, that's one down. 899 more to go. I don't think I'm going to get all 900 of them in this playthrough, though. And as you can see, now that we're in the water, we are actually vulnerable to losing... Yeah. Yeah, we're vulnerable to drowning. As you see by the stamina wheel, if it runs out, you will drown. Now, if we climb this, you may assume that this would be the Master Sword. That's where you'd be dead wrong. It's just a rusty sword. So let's go ahead and switch to that. Now, rusty weapons are breakable, so be very mindful of that. Now, as you can see, these rocks look like they can be broken, but we don't have the equipment necessary to do so as of yet. So let's just climb up here. We now... Yeah, we're now near the ruins of this giant temple the old man showed me. And we see these mysterious... These mysterious dead machines here. I'll explain more about ancient screws and such later. Oh. There's a baddie to contend with. We can actually commandeer their weapons if we make them drop it. We can throw weapons by... Ooh. We can gather monster parts. I'll explain more about that later. That's right. Pressing the... Pressing R will make you ready your weapon to throw it. Yep. And you can also throw items like these pots. Uh, don't count on finding rupees or hearts in pots, just like you could in other Zelda games. Ooh, let's see what we have here. We have arrows, but we don't have a bow yet. Let's open this chest and see what we have in here. We have a traveler's bow. We can use our bow by pressing the right Z trigger. Well, let's just come back here later on. There's something really interesting here, but I'd rather not show it until later. Anyway, moving on. There will be more bad guys wondering about the place later.
There's actually a Bokoblin here, too. So let's go ahead and get rid of him. As you can see, our sword is about ready to break. Let's see what we have here. We have the Hylian Trousers. Let's go ahead and change pants right now. And that just ups our defense quite a bit. Moving on. Let's change our weapons before it breaks. One less Bacoblin to worry about. Moving on. We have another tree here. It appears to be bearing apples. Mine. Ooh, a Hylian herb. Now there's a whole... Now here we have a Bokoblin encampment. And that giant skull over there is a, another one. Let's not deal with that right now. There's more than one way to dispatch the whole mess of these guys without arousing suspicion. And alerting them to your presence. Like so. That's right, folks. More than one way to skin a cat, and we can actually plunder the encampments. Now, I could go all the way up to that skull, but I'm not going to right now. Anyway, let's just move on. Now, you saw that exploding barrel the rock just hit? That's right. These can be used to your advantage or your disadvantage. Uh, hang on a minute. I don't like to use... I don't like to use motion controls. Yeah, <laughs> my head explode. Pick up these bows because we can never have too many bows. Because, like I said, all weapons can break after a while. We're actually close to our destination anyway. Shit. Ooh, a traveler's sword. Nice. A Bokoblin shield. Let's learn how to use our shield. We use it using the left Z trigger. And more monster parts and arrows to pick up. Let's walk up to this mysterious pedestal which has turned orange. Watch for falling debris. <laughs> uh oh.
Oh man, that's gotta hurt. Anybody recognize that sound? We now have the map data downloaded to our Sheikah slate. Nice. Sleep for the past 100 years. <laughs> the beast. When the beast regains its true power, this world will face its end. Right. I think we're going to stop the video here. In the next video, we're going to explore some more of the Great Plateau. What grand adventures await our hero? Well, you're just, you're just going to have to find out in the next video. Until then, this has been Walk Me Through. I'm Mr. O, saying peace. And that's a wrap. See you soon. Peace! Nigga. Oh, well, fuck it. Fuck it.